Okay, in this presentation, we're going to look at the hypothesis test for the difference in means. Okay, so this is a worked example. So for a random sample of 10 light bulbs from a particular brand, the life, the mean bulb life is 4,000 hours with a sample standard deviation of 200 hours. And likewise, for another brand of bulbs, a random sample of eight, okay, so two small samples, has a mean lifetime of 4,300 and a standard deviation of 250. Now test the hypothesis that there is no difference between the mean operating life of the two brands of the bulbs, of two brands of bulbs using a 5% significance level. Now, first off, what I'm going to do here is assume that the variances are fairly close together and that they're in fact they're equal to each other. That's an important thing to sort of state that we're going to assume uh, equal variances okay now that's uh, something we should discuss in another video how to test that okay but in this case I'm just going to sort of make it that statement that 200 and 250 are close enough to each other from the on the basis of the sample sizes that we're going to just work on the basis of uh, e assuming equal variances now let's go to our sample sizes here n1 is equal to 10 and 2 is equal to 8 these are our mean values there, 4,000 and 4,300. And that means we have a different of, difference of 300 hours, okay? The directional is not really important there. Uh, I'm just going to put in the minus 300 hours. But it's a sort of arbitrary choice to go first minus second, okay? You could actually equally put it in the other way around and end up with a difference there, an observed difference in means of 300 hours. So the variances are, are there, okay, 200 and 250. And what we have here is a small aggregate sample size that N1 plus N2 is less than 30. So essentially in this case, what we would deal with do here is that the degrees of freedom, N1 plus N2 uh, minus two is our degrees of freedom there. So it's minus one for each sample, okay? That's the degrees of freedom there, N1 plus N2 minus two, okay? That's a minus one for each sample size, okay? And that works out to be 16, okay? Now, so the first big step is to get the pooled variance estimate, okay? This part here. So this is a formula that we would probably see in the back of the exam paper here, okay? N1 minus one times S1 squared plus N2 minus one times S2 squared all over n1 plus n2 minus 2. That's essentially the minus 1 of the sample size there. So that's what I was sort of saying there. Okay, it's essentially those two added together. It's essentially weighting actually. Now, uh, essentially what we get here is the sample sizes are the variances, which are the standard deviations squared, okay? So a little bit of calculator work, uh, 9 times 200 squared plus 7 times 250 squared, all over 16. And that means our pool variance, uh, variance estimate is 49,843.75. Okay, now we're not done yet. What we're going to do is use this to calculate our standard error that in this particular case, this will be what our standard error formula would look like. Okay, that's our standard area for the difference of means. So it is our pooled, the square root of the pooled variance times one over N1 plus one over N2. So that's the sample sizes there, okay? And by the way, it's the actual sample size is not minus one, okay? So another bit of calculator work there, and that should work out to be, uh, well, you should get an answer close to 105.9, okay? So that's actually the hard part there, really, for this video, or this presentation, or this calculation, is calculating the pooled uh, variance estimate, S squared, SP squared, and from that calculating the standard error. So it's just a bit an extra bit of number crunching. Actually, also the bit about the assumed equal variances. I probably should have said something about that, but uh, you know, you, you're, quite often you're told in a short enough video that you can actually just like let that go or that you can assume it. Now, the test statistic is the observed difference minus the expected difference under the null hypothesis, 
Okay, so we observe a difference in means of 300 hours, or uh, minus 300 hours, and under the null hypothesis, which I didn't really write out, is that the mean is the means are equal to each other, which is to say the difference is zero. Okay, so actually I just write it out here. I realize I didn't do that yet, and I should have. So mu one minus mu two equals zero and mu one the, the the alternative is mu one minus mu two not equal to zero okay so if they're equal to each other the difference the expected difference in mean populations is zero and if they are not equal to each other that difference is not equal to zero okay that's mu there. Now, really, I should have had that written up there somewhere, but, you know. Essentially, the key part of this really is the pooled variance estimate, so I'll, I'll move on, okay? So this is the value we're going to use, the expected difference under the null hypothesis, which is zero, and that's what goes in there. And the observed difference using the sample means is minus 300. So minus 300 minus zero, all over 1.105.9, uh, 105.9, that gives us a test statistic of 2.83, minus 2.83 actually, okay? Now, the critical value is looked up using the standard student T distribution tables, okay? So this part here, I won't go, to, uh, go into in any great detail, but you should end up with a critical value of 2.120 now this is based on whoops this is based on a significance level of five percent 0 0.05 it's a two-tailed procedure okay which we can sort of see here okay uh, zero and uh, equal to zero not equal to zero that's a two-tailed procedure and degrees of freedom equal to 16 okay so that's how uh that tables is um, this, the one I generally use is called the Murdoch Barnes tables. Now, anyway, I will, I'll move on from that. We can now apply the decision rule. Is the absolute value of the test statistic the absolute value of the test statistic greater than the critical value? In this case, yes, it is. Okay. 2.83 is greater than 2.12. What does that mean? It means that we can reject the null hypothesis. There's evidence of a difference in means for the populations okay that mu1 not equal to mu2 okay that they have different population means that means one is probably better than the other okay we didn't really ask what but you know essentially we can sort of if we were to progress any further with the question or look at the raw data which we don't have but hypothetically we would probably find that the second brand is probably uh, much better in terms of bulb life anyway we leave it there that is the end of this presentation 